Okay, welcome back. We're back for another weekly running and training vlog. And this week, I want to talk to you about running before your race. And let me just put it out there right away. Do you like to run the day before your race? And I'm talking about any distance, be it a 5K all the way up to an ultra marathon. Do you generally like to run the day before or do you like to conserve your energy and maybe put your feet up the day before a race? Let me know in the comments. Oh, and while you are down there in the comments, this is the weekly running and training vlog. So the main purpose of this video is for you to tell me about your week of running. I want to hear about successes and I definitely want to hear about those setbacks. So now that you have done that, in this video I am going to give you five reasons why you should run the day before your race. Any distance. Let's get into it. Okay, first things first, I did find this article on runnersconnect.net. I'm sure a lot of you already follow Runners Connect and read a lot of the stuff that they put out, but they have a wealth of information. But today, today we're gonna stay focused. We're just gonna talk about the reasons why you need to run before your race. Now, a lot of people will think, I need to conserve energy. I don't wanna make myself tired. The day before, I'm gonna go out and thrash it. And while that is understandable, going for a short run before your race is actually gonna do you more good than harm. What's gonna do you harm is if you spend all day walking around the Expo. or if you go to a different city to race and you want to see the sights the day before that's what's going to set you back not your short run to shake out your legs but let's get into it and we'll start off with reason number one is that running the day before your race is not going to make you tired but not only is it not going to make you tired it's actually going to increase the chances that you run well and Ali Burdick the author of this article really puts it into perspective for us she points out that our recovery runs during the hardest portion of our training cycle which are probably going to be longer than what you're running the day before a race if that recovery run is enough to leave you feeling fresh for your next hard workout during a peak phase of your training cycle then a very short 20 minute recovery run the day before your race is not going to do you any harm nothing changes right we're training in a way that is going to allow us to race well so we don't want to make any changes so in a nutshell that run before your race will not tie you out but it will prepare your mind your body your legs to run optimally the next day okay number two let's talk about why and the why ultimately boils down to that shakeout run the day before your race is going to improve blood flow. So when we go for that shakeout run the day before our race, knowing that we're going to put our feet up for most of the rest of the day, it allows blood flow to be increased to our muscles, which is going to allow them to loosen up and deliver the oxygen and the nutrients that are going to prep your legs for a very intense effort the next day. Now, here's the thing, if you're running longer races like a half marathon, a marathon, or even longer, that shakeout run the day before is actually going to prime your body to store extra glycogen. And glycogen is something that we really need when we're running long. And also as an anecdotal example, the author points out that the athletes that she coaches that haven't run a shakeout run the day before a race, they tend to feel more tight and it feels as if they haven't warmed up enough prior to the race. So take that for what it's worth. Okay, moving right along. The third reason why you wanna run the day before a race is is because it stimulates the central nervous system. Now, your neuromuscular system is the communication between your brain and your body. And we want those lines of communication to stay open. Now, that little run that you go out and do the day before a race, that allows your neuromuscular system to increase the speed at which it sends signals from the brain to your muscles. And this, this I found surprising. It also allows your body to activate a greater number of muscle fibers and it promotes your muscle fibers to fire more forcefully, which if you're doing a more explosive event like a 5K, you're gonna want that explosive power. Now, I do recognize that it's pretty funny saying that a 5K is an explosive event, but that is coming from someone that likes to run the marathon. For me, running a 5K is just an all-out blast. The article also points out, and this is important for the reason that we're going to run the day before, is that you can actually make small improvements to your neuromuscular system in less than a day. So if you don't run the day before, you are leaving neuromuscular acceleration power on the table. And on the other side of the coin, just like we can improve our neuromuscular function in less than a day, neuromuscular degradation can take place within a day or two. So again, if you're not running the day before your race, just something short, something easy, it's possible that your neuromuscular system is not going to be activated at its most optimum. Number four, the reason that you want to run the day before your race is to calm your nerves. And I know you're with me on this one, but when you've been training for a big event for a long time, it's a bit nerve wracking, right? We've been building up to it. It's been stressful. We're thinking, are we going to meet our goals? Have I done enough training? Have I done the right kind of training? Have I been resting enough? Did I choose the right number of days to taper? Wait a second. Do I feel a cold coming on all these things all these things that come in during the taper crazies just 
make us a little stressed. And that run the day before your race can really help calm your nerves, knowing that you have done everything possible to better your chances of performing at your best the next day. Now, in last week's video, we did talk about visualization, and it was mainly visualization when getting over a running injury, but also visualization with performance. That shakeout run the day before your race is a great time to visualize how you are gonna execute your race strategy. It'd be great to think about how you are going to charge the race, cross the line feeling strong and confident, and ultimately leaving yourself feeling pretty good for the rest of the day. And finally, the fifth reason that you wanna run the day before your race is that it is routine. And it is a routine. Look, if you are training for a race, you are clearly a very committed runner. And just by the fact that you have been training for a race, it has become normal. You have gotten used to waking up and going for a run or coming home and going for a run. So why does anything need to change just because you're racing the next day? Keep to your routine, it'll lower your stress level, it'll give your body what it's craving. And also, I don't know about you, but sometimes when I take a day off from running, it doesn't give me the same refreshing benefit that I expect it to. Now, I know my body needs a day off from running once in a while, I usually take one a week, but I gotta say that that day back after my day off from running, I certainly don't feel refreshed. And I would say that I feel better after a harder workout than I do after a day off. So with that in mind, going out for an easy run, an easy shakeout at the end of your taper period, when you've been resting more than you have been throughout the entire cycle, is going to refresh your body. It's going to make you feel good. It's going to let you know that you are sticking to the routine. You're doing what your body wants. So just quickly, some of you may be wondering how far you need to run the day before your race. And really, this is going to come down to you. You are going to know what is going to work best for you. However, if you are running, a half marathon or a marathon. Probably best to keep it to about 20 minutes, 20 minutes or less. And I know that doesn't sound like much, but the reason that we want to keep our volume low the day before a race is because we are trying to conserve glycogen. And there's that Goldilocks zone. We run a little bit, it's going to prime our glycogen absorption. If we run too much, we're going to start using that glycogen and we might not have it for race day. So choose wisely. Just remember that doing too much, even a second too much, will totally torpedo your race plans. No, I'm just kidding. It's really not that serious. Just don't do too much. Generally speaking, I like to go out for between two and three miles the day before a race. And 95% of those two or three miles are very slow, just cruisy, just enjoying the run. And then I will do some 30 second strides towards the end of that, just to get my legs turning over and I'm really feeling fresh. And finally, I know that I have said that it's a pretty good idea. And if you've been paying attention, you know that I think it's a pretty good idea to run the day before your race, but there are times when you might not want to run the day before the race. And the author does point out that perhaps if you've been feeling a little injury or you've been sick and you just want to have one extra day of recovery and you still want to run your race. And look, there's a very fine line there. If you're still feeling the injury the day before the race, I don't know, seems like you may not want to do the race. But if you think one more day is all it takes, then take that day and then go crush it the next day at your race. I promise you in that situation, you are going to feel better from taking that day off. But aside from that, that's about it. Guys, gotta go for that shakeout run before your race. Okay, don't forget to let me know about the day before your races. What do you do? How far do you go? Do you include any kind of intensity? You know the drill in the comments. All right guys, I had a pretty good week of running. That was a considerably lower week of running than the prior week, but that's good. I didn't have a day off from work all last week, so I had to squeeze in my runs before work every day, which is totally fine, but I am not going to get up so crazy early that I can actually go for a long run. So my runs have been shorter than they were the week before. On Monday, I started off my week with 7.4 miles very easy. No surprise there. I do like to start my week easy. Tuesday was my first workout day of the week and I usually do intervals on a Tuesday and I ran a total of 8.1 miles which started off with a two mile warm up then I did a ladder workout of 400, 800, 1200, 1600, 1200, 800, 400 with 400 meters recovery in between and then I cooled down with a 0.85 of a mile easy run just to let that heart rate come back down. Before I bring the heart rate right back up I jumped in the shower and rushing to get to work on time. Wednesday was another super cruisy day 10.1 miles. Now I say it was was easy my heart rate was low but I was feeling tired on Wednesday and it was very humid very warm and there was lots of fog so it just wasn't easy to breathe I was soaked with sweat but the heart rate was low so I guess it was considered an easy run sometimes I have to remind myself that it is still an easy run even if my mind isn't telling me that everything feels easy you know sometimes an easy run doesn't feel as good as running hard Thursday was my second workout of the week this is usually my tempo day and we had a total of 10.2 miles with a two mile warm-up followed by a 7.2 mile at tempo and then I cooled down for one mile right at the end. Friday was my day off this week. All I did was ride the peloton when I got up, but because I didn't go for a run, it means I got to have a little extra sleep. I didn't wake up till 3.30 a.m. on Friday, which was a treat surprisingly. Saturday was my long run of the week. Now it was a little difficult on Saturday to squeeze in a long run. I wake up 
and I was out the door and I started my run 26 minutes after I woke up. Now, let me be clear. When I was a lot younger, that was very easy to do. I could wake up and just run out the door and go for my run. It's not as easy nowadays. But still, on Saturday, I did it. I knocked out 14 miles, which I felt pretty good about. The weather was getting a little cooler, so it felt really good, even though I was running at an easy pace. And then I wrapped up my week on Sunday with 7.6 miles. Now, I did run over to the mall. I ran up and down the car park just to get a little elevation. But still, very easy effort, bringing my week's total to 57.4 miles, which is about 92.38 kilometers. So all in all, pretty fantastic week. Guys, if you are still here, first of all, thank you. Well, why don't you let me know you've been here all the way to the end by putting the genie emoji in the comments. Hi right, guys, that's all I got for you. Be kind, be happy, run well. See you in a couple of days.